Good evening. I'm Zerlina Maxwell. It's finally Friday, and I wish I could start the show with a little bit of good news, but I'm sorry, I can't. So instead, I'll start with a genuine question for you at home. Why are we like this? No, I'm really asking seriously, why? Eight people were killed and several others were injured in another mass shooting last night, this time at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis. Police say the gunman, 19-year-old Brandon Scott Hull, randomly shot at people in a parking lot. Then he walked into a warehouse and kept firing before taking his own life. A month ago, it was three spas in Georgia. Then it was a grocery store in Colorado. Then it was a home in South Carolina. Now this. America, we've got to talk. We have to talk about why we tolerate this as our status quo. The same way I asked you last night about why we allow a status quo of police killings to continue, we need to also ask our, ourselves an even bigger question about why violence is our default response to, well, everything. So yeah, we have to talk about the violence. We have to, to talk honestly about our acceptance and our tolerance for the frequency of violence and death being the status quo we have every single day. We're continuing to wake up to terrible news about senseless loss of life. We have mass shootings. We have police officers shooting people. We have police people shooting at police officers. It's just violence on an endless loop. Earlier today, two people were killed in San Antonio after an officer exchanged fire with a driver during a routine traffic stop. Police say the conversation between the driver and the officer was casual, but at some point the driver pulled out a gun and opened fire on the officer. The officer was hit in the hand but managed to return fire, hitting the driver and a passenger. The two men were pronounced dead at the scene. We talk all the time about gun violence, but what this country has is a gun virus. And this virus is claiming lives during another pandemic that's still killing a thousand Americans every single day. But here's the difference. The coronavirus pandemic, that required scientists to quickly figure out a solution. And guess what? They did. Now it's up to us to get vaccinated so that one pandemic can come to an end. But once it does, do we go back to a mass shooting every single week? Do we go back to that even though we know the answer to our gun problem? Unfortunately for us, we can't rely on the scientists for this one. We have to rely on elected representatives to respond to public pressure to do what the people want them to do. We the people. We know the answer to the mass shooting ep epidemic. It is a solvable problem and it has been for decades. Basic gun safety legislation universal background checks, banning assault weapons. Our president supports these solutions. The majority of the American people support these solutions. And the victims of gun violence support these solutions. Like the Parkland students, who recognize that the only real way to change this epidemic is through legislation. They've campaigned for years to tighten gun laws in their home state of Florida and nationwide. They organized one of the largest protests in the history of the country advocating for changes. But most of their efforts have failed to translate into laws, not because they lack support, but because they lack support from a specific group of people, congressional Republicans. And for some reason, year after year, those congressional Republicans do nothing, shooting after shooting after shooting. They refuse to acknowledge this lethal problem, and they refuse to support gun safety legislation. As we speak, there are two gun safety bills just sitting there in the Senate. They're both unlikely to pass because they lack Republican support. America, we need to elect people who are going to change this status quo. So if you're an elected Republican who's still stuck in the mud and you refuse to do anything about guns, I need you to look at the faces of the people who are dead because of your inability to muster just a little bit of courage to do the right thing. We know how to solve this problem. 
The people are demanding action. It's only Republicans who refuse to act on guns. It's not Congress. Republicans. It's Republicans. And here's the truth. Republicans represent people who want to see these changes on guns. And they are elected to represent the interests of those people. And a majority of the people want stricter gun safety laws. If Republicans refuse to do that, then I think they need to find different jobs. Joining me now is Igor Volsky, executive director of Guns Down America and author of Guns Down, How to Defeat the NRA and Build a Safer Future with Fewer Guns, which really sounds necessary in this moment as we come on air with more bad news. And Igor, as I said, the problem isn't Congress. It's just straight up Republicans in Congress. How do we create enough public pressure to pass something through this Congress? Because a majority of Americans want that. Well, Zerlina, it's an embarrassment that we can't find 10 Senate Republicans who would support basic reforms, really foundational reforms like universal background checks to keep their constituents safe. The fact that they're siding with the NRA and the gun industry over the lives of their constituents is embarrassing. But in terms of what's actually possible, given that reality, right, given the fact that gun ownership has become an identity within conservative and Republican culture, how do you work around that? I think it's pretty clear that what we will likely need to do is reform the filibuster and then create a path for getting these bills across the finish line with a simple majority. And for that, we need President Biden to engage directly on this issue with Majority Leader Schumer. They need to develop a plan and a vision for getting that done because our lives are on the line. It seems like, you know, the, it needs to be a priority for this administration, and it may just have to be um, something that they can't ignore at all because it's in the news every day. I mean, they can want to talk about infrastructure, but they can't control whether or not there is going to be a mass shooting over overnight when we're all asleep. And I just always ask myself when, you know, supporters of, you know, guns and, and the NRA in, in, in the world where they want no restrictions, they want sort of a Wild West going on. And how do we get to the place? How do we get to this place where restrictions on guns are seen as an infringement on your rights and your freedom, but not being able to go to the grocery store without fear of being gunned down while you're on the checkout line isn't seen as an infringement on your, your rights, your freedom and your liberty? Yeah, well, in 1977, the NRA really underwent an internal revolution, literally a coup on the floor of the NRA convention that brought in uh, a new cohort of leaders who really began to use and weaponize the Second Amendment in order to oppose any and all gun reforms. They spent millions of dollars, Zerlina, in developing this theory that any kind of, or, or most kinds of gun restrictions undermine the Second Amendment. And ultimately, uh, that uh, paid off in, in a 2008 decision, what we know as the Heller decision from the Supreme Court, uh, which really expanded uh, gun rights in, in this country. Um, and so, uh, they've 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 really just created an atmosphere in which conservative politics and gun ownership and gun uh, enthusiasm and gun rights are one and the same. So even as you see the NRA losing power now, especially given the revelations that have come out about corruption within the NRA, their hold on the party is still so strong because it goes beyond a single organization. In fact, it's at the very core of what it means to be a conservative in America today. So you mentioned the NRA being broke. How do they have any power over Republicans if they're broke? I, I mean, the common, the conventional wisdom, I suppose, is that Republicans need that money from the gun lobby. But if the NRA, which is obviously one of the larger organizations, it's not the only organization in the gun lobby, but if they don't have any money, how are Republicans afraid of them? 
Well, because it's beyond the dollars. Uh, it's the broader political dynamic that if you're a Republican lawmaker and you choose to support uh, some kind of gun reform legislation, the likelihood is that you're going to be primaried from the right and you might lose your seat because even discussing these ideas or having any kind of real conversation about how do we reduce gun deaths in America, how do we restrict access to firearms is just not not tolerated in the party. Mm. Well, we'll see if anything will change and whether or not, you know, maybe one of these mass shootings will break through to congressional Republicans. Igor Volsky, thank you so much for being here tonight and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.